the the uh, May 9th governing board meeting for CV Fiber is uh, now called into session at 6:03. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Hearing none. Is there any public comment? Hearing none. Okay. Uh, CB Fiber Year 5, uh, I just wanted to put this up here in recognition of the fact that we are now entering Year 5. Uh, fingers crossed and toes, we will have uh, subscribers in our fifth year, many of them, and I can't possibly thank people enough for how much work they've been doing. We, we, we are blessed to have the talent and the people that are willing to work so unbelievably hard on this team. Uh, it, is, it is absolutely amazing. I want to thank everyone. And if anybody else wants to you know, say something briefly right now, let's do it before we get into the business. Oh, uh, Jeremy Matt's hand is up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so sort of in honor of this, I prepared uh, a, a few statistics. This is the 81st <clears throat> governing board meeting that we've had since we started. In so total, we, Jesus. The, the total <laughs> number of hours is 142.95 hours of governing board meetings. That's almost six days continuous of governing board meetings. If you multiply that by the number of people in each governing board meeting, that is 1,959 hours, like person hours of work, or 81.63 days of people work. So, and that is the governing board meetings only this is not committee work this is not anything else this is not all the work that people have been putting in so you know it's just an incredible amount of work and you know everyone should be proud of all the work that they're putting in and I just wanted to say thanks to everyone maggie's got her hand up i just wanted to say that i have never worked with an organization where i have seen such dedicated people and I'm blown away. I'm looking right now at, at the individuals that are volunteers that have already shown me, I can't even, I can't even imagine how many, it can't be hundreds. It has to be thousands of hours. They have poured into what has happened already. Um, I'm looking at you, Linda, and you, David, and Jeremy, and Chuck, and I don't see you, Jerry, but I know you're there, um, and I haven't had the opportunity to get to know the rest of you quite as well, but I'm sure that I will, and I, I'm very, very amazed by all of you. Thank you, Maggie. Well, Alan, you've got fun. your hand up. Yeah, so I actually uh, went back and I uh, I found the minutes from the first meeting of May 8th, 2018. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if they're, are they up on the website, Jeremy? I'm not sure. Um, okay. But one of the one of the things that's interesting is I didn't realize that, uh, Jerry, you started out as an alternate that first meeting. You were not you were not a member of, the, uh, of, of a full delegate at that point, which I thought was interesting. So you were you were in with uh, Stephen Whitaker and uh, several <laughs> other several uh, several other interesting folks, and when you read these meetings th these meeting minutes, and you get to stuff here here is a, here is an agenda item from the first meeting, meeting scheduling and location, <laughs> discussion included desired frequency dates and location of meetings. And it makes you realize how we really started from absolutely nothing. I mean, there was there was nothing except a bunch of statutes from the uh, from the state that said this is what a CUD is, and here's what you have to do, and here's how you put it together. And after that, it was all on us. And um, I don't is is uh, Jeremy Hansen on the call tonight? I don't see him there. I but don't see him. him. He said he was going to be in Europe, and he may not be able to make it. 
But let me tell you, starting from nothing, Jeremy Hansen standing in my driveway with a clipboard looking for signatures <laughs> yeah. to, get yeah. on the, to get on the meeting, uh, you know, uh, meeting day, town meeting. Uh, yeah. To that end, all the presentations the Jeremy Hansen did to select boards. I, yeah. I helped him with a couple, and they were a lot. Yeah. So, so uh, on, lot, on those first few meetings. On no, those ahead, first please. few meetings, sorry, I can't see. Yeah, <laughs> that's why, yeah. Jerry. So on those first few meetings, Alan, that first meeting where we were trying to figure out just where to meet, it was two hours and forty minutes long. <laughs> of the first, <laughs> of the first ten meetings, there are right. one, two, uh, two of them were, uh, it, or the average length of those first ten meetings was two hours and forty-four minutes. We we've had only I think one meeting that long in the last two years. Yeah, it's so, so we're not looking not, for scapegoats. I'm sure on this. So Alan, no, no, remember, no, exactly. We're also but, not looking to do it tonight either. <laughs> I you know, all remember really. how long it took us to do our mission statement? How many meetings that spanned? Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that sort of tells you how much we really didn't know what we were doing and we didn't know how to do anything. So we focused on stuff we thought we could handle, like a mission statement. And I mean, we kind of handle it, but it's uh, if you go back and look at it now, it sounds pretty quaint, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, anyhow, I, I, I didn't mean to bring up bad memories, just good ones. Um, <laughs> I, I thought it was interesting. And Congratulations to everybody for still being around five years later and actually having some fiber being strong as we speak and we'll be speaking for the next couple of months and years. It's uh, it's really impressive and it's all about people power. So thank you all. Oh, thank you, Alan. Thank you. Sh Siobhan, are there any more hands up on this one? No, my hands are up, but lots of applause is coming across the screen. Okay, great. Well. We all deserve it. Thank you. Uh, so I'd like to move on to the election of officers. Um, we've we've had a number of folks identify that they they wish to be uh, or they would be willing to be an officer if so chosen by the board. And uh, I would like to hand this over to Janiel to just to run this part of the meeting because. Siobhan is, is, is an officer that, that is willing to continue. I'm an officer willing to continue. So it, it, I think it would just be easier if Siobhan ran, excuse me, if Janiel ran this part of the, of the show. Is, is that okay with everybody? Chuck's hand is up. Uh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold my comment for a minute longer. Oh, okay. Chuck is saving his action. It's your okay. role, Jerry. Okay. <laughs> do you want to so, do you want yeah that's fine go I'm ahead happy please to. sure please thank you sure so um we will appoint um chair vice chair clerk and treasurer so uh i'll open it up in that order are there any nominations for chair i nominate jerry diamantides for chair siobhan Paracone for vice chair jeremy matt for clerk and Lori beth putnam for treasurer <laughs> is that I your second. comment chuck Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other, uh, and any, any seconds to that motion? Second. And with that, RD? Yep, it was. Okay. So, any other nominations? We just got to keep the meeting to under an hour, right? <laughs> <laughs> under, 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 Okay, hearing no more nominations. We have a, a nomination for Chuck Burt, uh, or, or we have a nomination from Chuck Burt um, for Jerry Diamantides as chair, Siobhan Paracone as vice chair, Jeremy Matt as clerk, and Lori Beth Putnam as treasurer. That has been seconded by R.D. Eno. Uh, any further, any further um, comments or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Say aye or raise your hand. Any opposed? I think Linda's actually frozen there. Yeah, I think Linda's frozen. <laughs> Although usually, Janelle, what, what you do, because there's only one nomination, a lot of times 
uh, the person running the meeting just instructs the clerk to cast one vote for each candidate because okay. there's only the one. Now, so I'm not sure to, we yeah. can do that because you're the clerk and this is a vote about the clerk. <laughs> um, so I mean, and, OK. And uh, I, no, I hear no opposition. Not a problem. OK, I hear no I opposition. So it, it looks like this was passed unanimously. Yep. Well, thank you, everyone. I, Unless I, someone wants to be clerk. <laughs> I hope we can all live up to the challenge here. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to move on to the committee chairs. And what, what, what I would like to do is ask each of the someone to speak for each of the committees uh, to identify who is there, uh, who they've nominated for chair. And then I think we can make a, a, a single motion to uh, to to ratify, if you will, all of these uh, chair people. Does that make sense to folks? Yes. Yep. Chuck's hand is up. Okay. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Chuck. Uh, communications committee did not have a chance to get together to do an election. Um, how would folks like to handle that? Um, uh, David Healy's hand is up. No, I'll wait. Okay. I didn't know if he was responding to that. We can appoint you temporary uh, until until you uh, have that meeting, and then we can come back, and it'll be a, a, an item for the next uh, governing board agenda. And you okay. can you can certainly be in the position, you know, temporarily, if you will. We we do tech. I'll just call out. We do technically have a quorum of the communications committee present at this meeting. <laughs> if that somehow changes the the math, but happy to do it that way if that's what people prefer. Uh, I defer to Alan. Yeah, uh, the way the rules the way the rules of procedure work is that if a person is not chosen tonight, the person who has been chair stays chair until there is a recommendation from the committee uh, of who should be the the new chair or the same chair, whatever you want to say. So there's no reason to do anything other than just wait till the next meeting uh, and put you in. Then it's no big deal. Sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> David and Healy we, has his hand up. Yep. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Shimon. No, the, the planning, uh, the operating and planning committee has uh, put forward David Healy as chair. Thank you. Uh, and is there anyone to speak for the finance committee? Not seeing any. Alan's got his hand up, though. Yeah, the policy committee has uh, put forth me. <laughs> Oh, it's the sacrificial lamb. Alan. <laughs> we're, all, we're all so excited about these victories. <laughs> the hard campaigns. <laughs> and it, Tom Fisher's it, hand is up too. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jerry. Good. No, I was going to ask if Tom Fisher was 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 attending. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we put forth Ray for the chair of the finance committee. D does he know? I believe he, yes. he, he was present. I think he did. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Oh, good. Okay. I don't did, see any more hands, just, Jerry. I think we just covered all the committee committees. So, uh, I, I I I will move that the governing board accept the nomination of Alan at the policy. Alan Gilbert for the chair of the policy committee, Ray Pelletier for the chairman of the finance committee, and David Healy for the chair of the ops and planning committee. Second. And that we will second. Perfect. We'll wait for, for Chuck for the next, for the communications committee for the next meeting. And I heard a second from RD. Yep. Is there additional discussion? Any hands up, Siobhan? All right then. Hearing none, are they are, are there any opposed to the motion? <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, folks. It looks Congratulations, like the, everyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got the, we got the band back together. <laughs> My condolences. Hail, hail. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. Well, uh, even though Maggie spoke for a uh, a few minutes there. There is a uh, uh, there is a slot in here for Maggie to introduce herself 
to the governing board. I don't believe Maggie was here for our last governing board meeting. So, Maggie, you want to take just a couple of minutes, please, and uh, and introduce introduce yourself a little bit. Not not everybody knows your background, or I mean, you know, they they know we have hired you, but they don't necessarily know who you are. So, please take the floor there. Hi, everybody. Um, for those of you have, who have not met me yet, um, and I see a few of you that I haven't had the chance to get to know yet, um, my name is Maggie Tuck Sucks. <laughs> Sawyer's. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I am laughing at what Chuck just did to my comment. Um, Maggie Tuck Sour. I do know my name. Um, right now, I live in Vernon. And I uh, just signed the contract and sold our property and am moving to Randolph in two weeks. And I am extremely excited um, to be here with all of you. My background has been in marketing and communications for a couple of decades now. Uh, I was in the military. I have raised four sons and they are out of the house. So I'm also celebrating that this year. Um, I have a lot to celebrate this year. So I'm going to be in a really good mood for 2023. Um, we uh, moved to Vermont three years ago during the pandemic. And uh, we built a little log cabin here on 50 acres. And um, so it's bittersweet to sell it. Um, so my philosophy for marketing uh, is um, to meet people where they are. And that is something that I uh, feel like all of you take very seriously here at CV Fiber. Uh, and your mission and your purpose really spoke to me because um, it is really important to me that everyone have a fair chance at education and everyone have a fair chance at um, building a better lives a life for themselves and I think that knowledge and an opportunity to get knowledge is how we do that so I think every one of you especially those who have been here for five years have been changing lives for every hour you have been in a meeting and I am super excited to be here and I welcome all of your ideas um, I ask that you don't pull a ray on me and send me 30 emails at four o'clock in the morning to share your ideas with me. Um, maybe one consolidated email would be super great. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. Ray's not here to defend himself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I seriously do welcome all your ideas. And I'm very excited about every one of you volunteering to come to the events in your community with me this summer and for every one of you to hit up your select board for all that ARPA money if you haven't done it yet. That's my sales pitch. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> uh, didn't realize the, the military aspect. What branch, if I may? Um, I did uh, Army and Air Force Reserves. I did Army, and then I went to the Air Force, and I hated the Air Force, and I asked them if they would put me back in the Army, and they said, are you crazy? And I said, yes, sir. But they did it anyway, so I went back to the Army, and that's where I finished. Okay, got it. Coast Guard here. I'm always looking for old Coasties, that's all. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm going to – I'm trying to log in here, uh, Siobhan. This might actually work. Uh, but let's, uh, let's move on to the meeting minutes approval while I'm, while I'm trying to get online, please. All right. Uh, motion to approve the April 11th, 2023 meeting minutes as drafted. Um, second. All right. That sounded like a second from Chuck. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Beautiful. Uh, are there uh, any discussion? Uh, any opposed to that matter? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you very much. We have some approved meeting minutes. Excellent. Uh, is 
Lori Beth on the line. I see 21 participants. That's wonderful. I'm down at the bottom. <laughs> well, let's get you right up to the top there, Lori Beth. And if you if you would walk through the treasurer's report, please, that would be fantastic. Sure. I sent out uh, copies of the balance sheet, the year-to-date profit and loss, um, and also uh, a detail by vendor <clears throat> of the expenses that we've had so far. <clears throat> um, it is a summary. Um, a couple of times in the past when we've discussed the finances, they've asked um, what are the prepaid expenses, and it actually is four items that are journal entried at the end of the year. This is something that the accountants come in, they journal entry it, anything that's been paid ahead of time, deposits on things. In this particular case, there are four of them for P BKB, and they totaled that 826,000. Now at the end of the year, the accountants will come back in again and as part of the closings for the year and make new entries and reverse any of these that have been used to be paying some of the bills. So that you probably will see this, these amounts go away, but there are probably going to be others that replace them. So there's usually always um, some amount in that column. Um, it's rare that you end up with no prepaid invoices, especially when some of the big companies ask for deposits. And that's where those deposits show up. Um, I'm not sure if there's any other questions. Um, it's pretty straightforward, unless someone has a particular question. Hearing none. Thank you, Lori Beth. Welcome. Excellent. Uh, let uh, Janiel and uh, Lucas, could you could you? Uh, however you want to do it among yourselves, give us a construction update and an outlook for where we're going in the next few weeks. And I, 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 I specifically put outlook in this, uh, this uh, agenda here because we usually just give an update of where we are, but we are, we are, we are pivoting hard here. So I, I want to make sure the folks not only understand where we are, but where we plan to be in the next few weeks before we, we get together again. So uh, Janiel, I'll hand that over to you and, and take it as you will, please. Okay, yeah, um, I, I'm going to I'm gonna say, Lucas, I, I uh, would be happy to hear from you first and then I can fill in anything that, um, you know, after you have a chance to speak. Do you want to you wanna start this conversation about where we're at with construction and where we're going with construction? Sure, absolutely. Um, so we um, added another crew this week uh, to Callus. So we're now running three crews. Um, and from what I've heard in, in two days of it, they are a full board. They are very caffeinated and ready to go. So we're getting a lot more done already. Um, so that's the good news. We're hoping to add another crew here um, any day, any week, um, once we can um, free up more guys. So uh, last uh, last numbers we had were 16 miles of fiber and 21 miles of strand. I'd expect in the last couple of days that's that's upped by a little bit. Um, so that's where we're at mileage wise. Uh, we received our A and R permit for the Calus substation. Uh, so we're going to begin construction on that OLT um, any any day now. We're just waiting to get the underground crew on site. Um, and we'll be immediately following that with uh, getting electronics and lighting it up. So uh, things are looking good in Calus for sure. And uh, in addition to that, we're, we're hoping to get uh, going on the Rumney area very soon, get that scope of work approved and get crews going on that. We're told, you know, back to the outlook, I guess, we're told that that is a much cleaner run. So we're hoping to be able to move a lot faster there. Um, so, you know, with any luck, we will have a lot of miles behind us here in the very near future. Janelle, anything you want to add to that? Um, 
just that uh, we are our contractors looking at a lay down yard that will uh, be exclusively CV fibers in the next couple of weeks. And so we'll be able to kit up to a month's materials at a time. And so when we get the crews going, they'll be able to kit direct kit from the warehouse to the lay down yard and work a lot more efficiently and quickly um, toward getting first strand and then fiber laid down. Um, yeah, so things are things are looking very good in in both the the construction and in the process to get the construction going. Alan, I see your hand is up, sir. Sorry if I had to have my mic off. I I've been wondering if it might be a good idea that when we move into a to a new area, there couldn't be some briefing for the delegate in that particular or delegates in those particular areas because so much of this is theoretical and uh abstract to us uh we haven't really seen the work that's I, I haven't seen the work that's being done in callus i don't i don't know where it's going i actually don't know how the construction is going to proceed in my town and i i think worcester is is in the is in the the from the Middlesex area. So there's going to be a lot happening here. I'm getting more and more questions, and it makes me a little bit nervous that I don't know more about how the system is going to run, how where, where it's going to be built, uh, what kind of crews are going to be around soon. I'm getting lots of questions about conduits and drops and that sort of thing. So I'm, I, I just wonder if other delegates are beginning to feel that way too, because this is becoming real. And, and I feel like up to now, it's been easy to sort of sit back and answer the few questions you get on the internet, but it's uh, really picking up speed quickly. And I find myself not knowing as much as I'd like to know about what's gonna happen in my town. Well, Alan, we're in luck because this, this is one of Maggie's major tasks is to help us through this 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 process. So Maggie, go for it, please. I'm so glad you asked that, Alan. Um, I was hoping somebody would ask that. And this. Well, I'm glad we talked about it. I'm glad we talked this afternoon. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so what we would like to do is offer uh, some delegate and other volunteer training, um, and really catch everyone up to speed on, you know exactly what the the technology and the operations looks like so that when you are approached by someone in your community you can speak of the technology and feel comfortable doing so and have answers to their questions in addition i'm forming a task force of individuals that is going to help answer some kind of canned uh, responses to what we're seeing is very common questions asked after we have done some kind of media um, blast or a, an article comes out that they, you know, pick up on. We get emails and many of the questions are the same. So we're going to form a task force and put all of the, the brains together to come up with responses. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to form an on-call group. You're welcome to volunteer for that, Alan, as is every delegate, and because we don't want anyone to burn out, um, staff or volunteer alike, and that individual would have call for one week. That might mean answering maybe eight, maybe one, maybe, 12 emails, but we're already going to have most of those emails prepared and you're just going to plug in one or two words. Um, and if the if the question gets super complicated, then you're going to say, this is what I know of the situation. But on Monday, I'm going to have our operations manager, Lucas, reach out to you. Um, if you're talking to someone in person in your town, and it again, it feels like it's more than maybe what you feel comfortable answering, you're gonna be able to do the same thing. You're gonna be able to say, you know what, this is what I know, but I'm gonna have Janelle or Lucas contact you. But we are gonna have trainings very soon, and 
if it were up to me, we'd have at least 40 seats full. Um, that would be every delegate and every alternate. See what I did there? We're getting alternates too. Good idea. You know, the, the one thing that I would warn you about is we're, we're slowly wandering into the most difficult time of the year to gather people together for meetings. I mean, summertime is when every, everybody sort of <laughs> escapes or shuts down or whatever. So I think the planning of when meetings will be held or getting groups of people together, we've got to be ahead of it so that people know um, when things are going to happen and they can, as much as possible, try to plan their time around being able to get to those meetings. Uh, that's 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 good, Alan. Henry, before I go to you, let me make one statement. I saw Tom Fisher put in the chat. Maggie, please uh, include select board communications in that in that plan that you're developing to let people know where we're working and where we're going. Uh, the, it'll be important for the select boards to be aware. Henry, please go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, um, I think it would be really helpful at these meetings if we had a map of the CLOs and our progress uh, yeah. along those lines um, so that we can see every month uh, from a visual map point of view how we're progressing. Thanks. Good, po good point, Henry. I like that. Janil, did you did you get that, a, a, a kind of a progress map? Yeah, a I progress like map is, uh, is something that um, NRTC has been toying with the idea of offering us um, yep. so that we have a visual for where the where the crowd is or where the where the um, where the construction is happening and where it's going to be happening next. Yeah, be nice yeah. on the no, website. That's... Yes, it would be. It would be. It would be very good there. Uh, I'd like to one add just one thing for, on the construction update, just for the uh, governing board's awareness. Um, this isn't necessarily a problem at all but it again it's just it's just for awareness we're we're finding that it's uh a little bit more expensive doing the work than was originally anticipated not not by a tremendous amount but we have been approached to uh, negotiate a, a a a minor uptick in 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 the rates that we're paying in order to get the work done um, and it's something that we will we will be considering in the future as as we're working with our contractors. Uh, things have changed, prices have increased. So I just wanted to uh, to put that out there for the governing board, just for your awareness. It's not it it, does, it won't require governing board action, but it, again, it's just just for your awareness. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's doing business, and things are really moving forward. So I'm. I'm looking forward to having the same discussion next month to see where we are. A anything else, Janiel or Lucas or anyone else on the our construction update? Well, I would just add in the meantime, you know, until Maggie gets everything rolling, um, you know, if there's any questions you have, feel free to give me a, a shout and I can update as best I can. You know, I'm available all day and um, always happy to talk with you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to shift now to a website and marketing update and outlook. Um, and my, my intention here is um, not just the website, things are really coming to a head. So, you know, we've started by separating out construction. We separated out the website. We had separated out marketing. And now we're really finding that these things are blending together more all the time. And our, our website and marketing is really blending into operations because they're, they're setting up operations in, in a somewhat similar manner that construction is setting up operations where all these things are blending together to make a unified CV fiber presence. So I, I don't want the... Uh, the kickoff of our actual operating to, to, to be looked at as a sidebar somewhere. It's, it's interwoven in all of this, and especially in our website and marketing update. Um, I think I'll start with Chuck, and Chuck, I'll let you pass that around to whomever um, you're ready to. As the chair of the communications committee, I, I, I'll, I'll have you start off. 
for another month anyway. <laughs> uh, I, I will I will start <clears throat> by asking Maggie whether she would like to take a stab at this or whether she would like me to start uh, for this month and then uh, have a gentle ask to her to take this over going forward. What do you think, Maggie? You want to you want to take a stab at it? Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I was answering RD's question, and I can't listen and type at the same time because I've trained myself to ignore four sons. So can you repeat the question? Web website progress status update. Website status progress update. Well, I can tell you that thanks to you and Linda, we have made enormous progress in the last two weeks and we um, did a test on Monday and from what I understand and I'm going to pass the wand here to Linda in just a second um, from what I understand compared to the first test there's absolutely no comparison to what people had to say it's it's so close to being the live launch and um i'm i'm really really excited for everyone to see it so linda would you like to share the good news we did two rounds of testing so far uh, round one was computers and laptops and round two was mobile devices phones tablets uh, in between the two, we took the, the input from the round one and we incorporated in, Maggie and I incorporated it into round two. And the difference was amazing. Just listening to the feedback from round one. And now we went through for round two and we didn't find any bugs that we, new bugs that we didn't already know about in round two. And this is really encouraging. The way you decide when you're ready for launch is you um, are minimizing the number of new bugs that you find. I think we have three outstanding bugs at the moment, which is uh, very good. Chuck says yes. That would uh, get us to launch. The next round of testing is called crash testing. We are going to ask for volunteers to come and try to crash our app. It's better that we crash it than having our customers crash it. So please give your names to me or Janiel, because uh, we really need eight or 10 volunteers. And I hate to keep asking the same people to be volunteers. So please volunteer for the next round of crash testing. Thank you. Uh, I would oh, just right. like to add on to, uh, to what Linda said there with a, a, a quick explanation of crash testing. Uh, it's not nearly as scary as watching one of those dummies careening into a wall as, as it sounds. Um, what you try to do is you actually put on your crazy hat and try to enter the most bizarre information you can think of as you're going through the flow to see what happens. Uh, email addresses that don't look like email addresses, phone numbers from China, uh, you know, whatever you can think of that might possibly cause our application to shut down, you go ahead and you, you try it, you do it, and, and you see what happens. Um, I will tell you one thing we know for a fact doesn't work very well is the back button. Uh, unfortunately, that's something that's not in our control and that's uh, wholly in CrowdFiber's control. You will break the application if you do a whole lot of forward and back. So just warning you right off the bat that that, that is the case. Uh, but aside from that, uh, see what you can find. It's kind of fun to, to put on the creative hat and, and see what you can do to, to make things not work the way you would expect. That, thanks, thanks, Chuck. Uh, John Morris, um, before I go to you. Announcement, well, Jerry? Yeah, I no, you were gonna uh, do uh, an announcement. John Morris has his hand up, Linda. I just oh. wanted to know, folks that want to volunteer for this, who do they contact? Me. Okay, and then I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you, Linda. Go ahead, John. I just wanted to clarify, um, Linda, you said app. Do you mean like a phone app that's downloaded or do you mean the, the web application? The, the web. The website. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, and I, I see Henry's hand is up. Go ahead, Henry. Right. Um, so uh, in the 
category of crash testing. Uh, a big part of my career was in performance testing. So when you announce something and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, 100 people are at the website, um, does it, is it scalable? So that's something I'd like to throw out there. I no longer have access to my performance testing tools, so I can't do it for you. But, um, you know, what we did, you know, when we didn't, when we couldn't use performance testing tools was to arrange a time when everyone would go on the website at the same time and try to break it that way. So we could, you know, have a, a performance testing crash party and all sync up at the same time to hit the website and see what happens. Thanks. Yeah, I, 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 I want to speak to that a moment just to clarify for you, Henry. Um, because this is a third party hosted application, uh, they are responsible for performance and, and availability and uptime. Um, and I will tell you, they have customers who are much, much bigger than we are already on their platform that they manage today. Um, so I, I, it's always possible that, you know, there's something different about our instance that, uh, that makes it less performant than other instances, particularly since we've customized the theme a great deal at this point in time. Uh, but um, I will say that even if we did find an issue there, there's not anything we could do about it. So, um, you know, uh, the, the, the focus will really be on kind of breaking the, the interactivity and, and breaking the theme uh, that we've put together, not so much on the performance and scalability because that is managed by Crown Fiber. But, you know, certainly open to ideas if you have. Linda, before I go to you, let me ask John if he has a follow up because I see his hand is still up. John, do you have do you want to follow up? Sorry, no, I thought I had put my hand down. Oh, OK, no problem. Thank you. Uh, Linda, all yours. I am more worried about people with very slow Internet who cannot load our pages to sign up. OK, that is to me, to me more of a worry. We, we, we spent quite a bit of time at the beginning trying to optimize our code to make it so that it would be a lot faster and a lot easier for people to just load the pages. But that that's more of a worry than having too many people uh, on the site at once. So that's a problem I'd love to have, to tell you the truth. OK, and also, Linda, maybe you can speak to the webinar that we had discussed that would um, be very specific for our our delegates and it would be open to the public, but it would very much be for the delegates to be able to see the website, how it works, what it's doing, and kind of to walk everybody through how the website works, just so that you have a better understanding whenever you speak to someone um, in, in your hometown or anywhere else that's interested in CV Fiber. Uh, we're, we're looking to do this uh, sometime in, towards the end of the month. Um, where where we would we would have this webinar and get get everybody um, or as many delegates as as are interested to be up to speed to understand uh, what our website is doing and its capabilities. Linda, do you want to add to that? Just that it's really important that you be able to understand the website enough to talk with your constituents. So uh, alternates, delegates, um, uh, you know, whoever. It's interested in the web, seeing the website, how it works. I think that's really important. So thank you for offering this webinar. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, any any other discussion about our our website marketing update? I I this this for me this flows right into the next um, the the next item the the services or fees. Yeah, go ahead, Chuck. Um, Somehow, uh, an ask about Outlook was added into the agenda item, but I don't know why. Um, maybe you can elaborate on that, or oh, I, absolutely. The same as with the construction. You know where we plan on going in the in the next few weeks, and I, my sense was that 
that kind of we were talking about that, that where we're, where we're going in the next few weeks with, with having the webinar ready, additional testing. So just, just kind of that, you know, looking forward, what's happening between now and our next meeting, which is going to be June 16th or 12th or whatever it is. Thank you. And in my mind, I got that conflated with Outlook, the application. So thank you. Oh, my God. No, we're not even going to go there. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so. Again, everything, everything is coming together here very quickly. And when you're when when as as I've come to understand, because this is nowhere my field of expertise in the slightest, but, but what I've come, come to understand is that as we're pulling everything together, and especially as we're pulling the website together where we need to make information available, we've been finding that there are bits of information that we don't have and that there are decisions that need to be made that we haven't made. And, and that as we're moving forward, it's likely that this, this kind of thing where we're going to have to make some decisions on the edge, if you will, um, is going to keep popping up for us. And certainly it's going to come up in the next three weeks, let's say four weeks, where we're really getting ready to go live. And then as we learn in, in future where we may need to tweak things on the website, those decisions, again, are going to have to be made. And what we've, what we've been doing is we've always asked for authority to make decisions at the various levels that that we operate and what 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 we have now is we have the authority with the 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 governing board and the executive committee we've established our rate structure and you know our basic service plan and our rate structure but we we haven't really finalized some of the things along the edge that 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 we're, we're still working out like with Waitsfield. So for example, if somebody wants telephone service or, and they need wiring in the house, you know, how does that, how does that get addressed on the website? You know, what's the, what's the, what's the fee for that? What's the, you know, what, how does that, how is that going to work? These, these kinds of items that we don't want to keep coming back to the governing board to decide. We, we, the finance committee um, in their in their most recent meeting uh, recommended that these kinds of things come to the executive committee instead of the governing board because the executive committee meets every couple of weeks. The, the executive committee is a smaller quorum if we need to make a decision because the things on our website, we don't want it to be wrong or blank. You know, as, 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 we, as we learn these items where we need to fill the gaps, so I've put together a motion that is in, in it's a it's a Pelletier-esque motion that basically lays out where the authority has come from and is is requesting that the authority to make these decisions uh, rest with the uh, executive committee so that we can be we can be fluid enough and that the the uh, governing board is notified of these decisions. And of course, the governing board can always say, hey, wait, we didn't like that. But the idea is, is that we, we get the fluidity and we're able to go back and forth with Waitsfield and, and whom, whomever else we may need to talk with about making these decisions without having to come all the way back to the governing board and certainly to not have special special meetings. I don't think these decisions necessarily need to be at the governing board level, which is why I'm going to, to bring forward this uh, this motion. I'm going to put it in the chat. Uh, so bear with me because I am uh, I'm not going to type it. I, I am a one finger typist, but I, uh, I I I have it here. In the chat, bear with me a second. Second. <laughs> that's very good. That is that's 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 very good. Okay, so Peter. I'm just doing select all. Okay, and now I'm going back to the chat. Please excuse me as I fumble through this. That's how you paste, right? 
It didn't go. Why not? You have to hit enter. Hit enter? No, I hit, yeah, I'm looking for. You, paste it. you have to copy the selection. I did. Well, I I did select all. But, did you copy it? Oh, they, oh now control C. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Don't embarrass yourself. You know, I'm beyond beyond embarrassment. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Let, let, let me read this, please. Um, so, whereas on the 9th of November 2022, the Executive Committee approved the CV Fiber subscription rate plan dated 9 November 2022 and recommended that the Governing Board ratify the CV Fiber subscription rate plan dated 9 November 2022. Whereas on 11 November 2022, the Governing Board ratified the CV Fiber Subscription Rate Plan dated 9 November 2022 and authorized the Executive Committee to oversee the publication of the plan at such time and in such manner as it determines to be appropriate. Whereas the CV Fiber Subscription Rate Plan dated 9 November 2022 was presented to the public in the webinar dated 16 November 2022 and is currently available on the CV Fiber website. Whereas the Executive Committee approved the outline of subscription terms and conditions dated 22 November 2022 and notified the Board of the same on 13 December 2023. Whereas during the development of the CV Fiber website and in consultation with Waitsfield Telecom and other CUDs, the need to determine ancillary services and associated fees has become apparent. Whereas the Finance Committee on the 4th of May 2023 recommended that the Governing Board be made aware that determination of ancillary services and associated fees is necessary and that exploration of such services and fees is being performed as a component of the website development. It is moved that the Governing Board authorize the Executive Committee to set and publicize such ancillary service, services and fees as may be required after consultation with the Finance Committee, Waitsfield Telecom, and others, and to notify the Governing Board after determinations have been made. Second. 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 I think that was Jeremy underneath Siobhan's exuberance. He just, he just, he, he's closer so the, the electrons didn't have to go as far. Okay, <laughs> seconded, or, uh, yeah. <laughs> seconded by Jeremy. Is there, there any discussion on this? I, I, I tried to make it transparent. The whole point here is to be transparent uh, and accountable and make sure, as I, as I had discussed earlier with some folks, you know, we have two types of trust that we, that we, rely on here. One, one type of trust is internal, you know, vertically through the, the, the association, through the, the, uh, the governing board and, and, and the, the committees and the executive committee. You know, there's a trust among all of us there. There's also a trust with the public, that the public knows that we're transparent and, the, and that the public trusts that what we say we're doing, we're doing, and what we've done, we've actually done. So I, I think it's, a, it's important to be transparent and have this kind of authority very specifically um, be allowed for the for the governing board. Uh, is there, uh, Alan? Please, Jerry, I'm, I'm I'm having just a little bit of a problem with understanding what the very end of this um, uh, motion is asking, and what I'm confused about is what after determinations have been made i don't know what that means what what it seems it, it makes sense the beginning of this last paragraph makes sense okay where people are notified about what we're doing right but i don't that know what it means to notify the governing what is the determination the 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 the, the, the determination that that this service is is going to be available and the fee will be so much after having worked this through with Waitsfield to make sure it's you know it fits in with what we're doing, make and and consultation with uh, typically other CUDs to make sure that we're all on the same page and understand what each other's doing. So that the determination would be to uh, 
to say that we're going to do these services at this fee and publicize it, we're going to put it on the website, that's the determination and that the governing so board needs to be notified. Okay, so it's not, it's not, it's not a system of how we're going to uh, set these fees or whatever. It's a, it's every time that we do engage in setting a fee for something that's come up, the governing board is going to be notified. Is that correct? That's that that is, that was my intention in this. Yes, and I apologize okay. for not making that clear. Okay. Um, I I think we have Maggie, and then I believe Tom also has his hand up. Um, and and I'm kind of with Alan. I'm I'm slightly confused by the wording at the end. Um, I'm just curious as to, I do understand given we're talking about finances, why the finance committee would would um, have involvement with this, but we're talking, as you said, about trust, both within this organization and um, with the public. And so I'm curious why consultation with the um, communications committee wouldn't be able to bring this to the executive committee's attention. Um, and then it, at that point, if the executive committee felt that it was important enough to take forward, they could do so. Um, you know, I don't think the, the communi communications committee would do anything untoward that was going to hurt the organization any more than the financial um, finance committee would. Uh, and yeah. please talk amongst yourselves yeah. and explain. Well, yeah, it, to it's me. not about it, it's it's not about doing anything untoward or hurt. The idea is really anything anything that has to do with with fees really really should be should should have the finance committees consultation that, that you know the finance committee needs to needs needs to know that that that's that's all that was that's all that was intended there we're 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 talking about fees the finance committee needs 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 to know and, and be consulted and uh tom fisher yeah um so first i have no problem with the way this is written i think the the key verbs there are set that the executive committee is free to set the ancillary service and fees. Um, also that it mentions finance committee, WCVT and others. I think others is possibly including other committees. It probably depends on the particular topic that is at, you know, the executive committees um, at their table. Um, I did want to ask if, at that finance committee that we had not long ago, Thursday, um, that uh, the, the major debate at the time was um, whether or not minor dollar single dollar changes to rates could be um could that alteration be made by the executive committee in order to um better potentially outreach um, with marketing and so forth so i just wanted to make sure that this motion is covering that need or, or if there's been discussion at the executive committee and, and this is where we've landed i'm fine with that just want to make sure we didn't miss anything well it it, it was not missed actually it's it's purposefully not a part of this this motion to to be able to change the rate the the rates that we already have that are that are that are out to the public that that is something that still goes through the executive committee and ratified that though that our rate structure our main rate structure that that is comes from our business plan and and is is you know works towards the 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 bulk of the fees that we're going to be collecting. That is that hasn't that's the authorization for that has not changed and is not um, addressed in this. Chuck, give me one second. Okay, uh, Tom, do you want to do you need do you want to respond to that? Nope, I'm all set. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Chuck and then Linda, please. Um, question, which is, if there were a determination made <clears throat> in the communications committee and or 
by Maggie and or in partnership with a marketing firm, something like that, <clears throat> that it would behoove us to introduce like short term discounting or, you know, limited time discounts or or, you know, promotional pricing and periods and, and things of that nature. Uh, do you perceive that sort of thing as falling under the jurisdiction of this as well? I do. I do. Thank you. I, I, I think that's 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 probably a, 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 a good example. Uh, David supports the motion, but he has to leave. <laughs> um, Jeremy, are we going to still have quorum? Yeah, we had uh, we have 12 people on, so now we're down to 11 with David leaving. And if we lose one more, then we cannot conduct any business. OK, Linda, go ahead, please. In the past, we had uh, Crawford giving us some advice, but not necessarily on pricing. And now, uh, so we we haven't had a good marketing uh, slant, I'm going to say, to the prices that we chose to begin with. I think it's really important in the future that we take the marketing research and, and the marketing op opinion into consideration on pricing, not only on descriptions of our price of our product, but also on pricing, because the way people perceive us through the pricing is very important. We are trying to build trust with our customers. And if the pricing looks sleazy, then the customers are going to think that we are not trustworthy. So I think it's really important to keep these kind of aspects in view, even with the previous uh, uh, voting that we had last, last year, where we didn't have marketing consultation on these issues. Point taken. I think that's an important point. We are we are certainly learning as we move as we move forward. Additional discussion. Um, shall we go to a vote on this before we lose anybody else? Hearing no additional discussion, are there any opposed to the motion? I would just suggest that instead of specifying a, a committee, why can't we say, I mean, we're being so broad, right? We're saying, and others. So maybe with the appropriate committee or committees, Waitsfield and others, because I, I don't know why this would necessarily, I could foresee where the communications committee would be um, as important to a decision about um, services and fees, right? We're talking about services and fees, yeah. right? We're not just talking about fees. So it's silly to say one committee versus a committee or committees or or even just leave out committees and because we have Waitsfield and others. Uh, well, I, I had finance committee in there, as I said, because we specifically talk about fees. Um, I can say with with CV fiber, with the appropriate CV fiber committees, peer, plural, I, I can think do that's that. better because it, it, it we ha we we shouldn't assume that services and fees um, would take out policy committee or planning and you know operations and planning committee or communications committee. I think all of the committees are equally important in deciding on services and fees. I'll I'll, I'll go with that. I'll, I'll I will take that as a friendly amendment. So I've ch I've changed. Um, I have I have changed the 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 wording now to say after consultation with the appropriate CV fiber committees, S in parentheses, um, and then it continues, as and so it no longer mentions the finance committee. It includes all committees, and I like that better. Yes. Uh, does uh, who seconded this? Did that does this? I second. This? Make a motion. I just does I, does it change the second for you, Linda? No, you, I like you, the I like the amendment. Okay, I, I like the Very friendly good. amendment. Very good. So, any other discussion? So let's vote on the um, let's let's vote on the motion with the including the friendly amendment. Are there any opposed to the motion? 
Are there any abstain abstentions? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, I will. I think I'll. I can. I can copy this and put it back in the. Put it back in the chat um, with the with the change. Um, okay. Where are we now? Financial services support. Okay, so I think this one this one is 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 for me to uh, just provide some information. There's no action required here. Vicuda has um, come to terms and and hired a firm PFM that is a financial advisor in a fiduciary sense. They are the folks that would. Uh, provide information and support to anyone that any any um, CUD that wants to go to the bond market or maybe wants to go to the bank or maybe is looking for any other vehicle where um, we could get some funds that would be a loan of some type, a note of some type. Um, and Vicuda has hired these folks. They, I use the term fiduciary because they definitely would work for the CUD in the CUD's interest. They're not an underwriter who is just basically a middleman that pulls everybody together and makes it happen. These folks work in our would work in our interest if they were working for us. Um, Vicuda has um, has a. a uh, a task order with them, and we have started talking with them about what the possibilities are, what information we need to provide, what 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 would they need to help steer us in the right direction to look at the uh, market for funds that would be available to us. Um, exploratory at the moment, we're we're learning about what we need. Um, in order to enter this market. And you know, part of this, of course, is to fill the funding gap that we've all talked about. But the VCBB is also working on the funding gap. So you know, we, we don't know how that gap is going to be closed, but we're moving forward on multiple fronts, um, including alternative grants to do that. Um, and the alternative grants, we are also looking at alter, uh, grant application support. We are also looking at the possibility of having a contract that that could would be done at the executive committee level, but we are looking at the possibility of having a contract to support us in fulfilling our grant applications that, that we, we additional grants that we're looking for from the federal government. They are information intensive, time intensive. We, we just don't have the wherewith. We really don't have the wherewithal to do this in a timely manner. And if, if uh, well, I, I won't speak for him, but, but David knows what it takes to pull together all the information for a federal grant, and it's a lot. So we are, we are looking at uh, NRTC, and they have a, 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 a colleague team, uh, 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 an, another uh, consultant that they work with that uh, focuses on getting, getting applications into these federal grants in a timely manner. We are talking about that with them. We're still identifying grants. We're, we're, we're talking about options. Um, we came close at one time to pulling the trigger. We did some preliminary information and found that it just it it we we it wasn't going to fly. We couldn't we couldn't meet the criteria that were needed for the grant. Uh, Janiel, do you have anything that you'd like to add to to the couple of things that I just I just listed here? Yeah. So in 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 looking at long term viability sustainability, we're also looking at top line solutions um, and how to how to get a better take rate and. Uh, we're we're talking with Waitsfield about strategy for how we sell 
the um, services to the consumer and looking at competition and thinking about the, the top line as well as um, grants. So we're taking a more, um, we're taking a broader look at all of the funding options, including grants and going to the bond market and other creative um, ch ch charity type um, situations, as well as um, leveraging local organizations um, and, and top line marketing and increasing revenue. Um, so we're, we're looking broadly at this and discussing this with with v, with Vicuda as well um, and among other CUDs. So we're taking a quite a broad perspective of sus long term sustainability. And, and if, if anybody is wondering, my my 30,000 foot perspective on this is is quite simple. The less we need to borrow to complete our universal service obligation, the lower our fees will be to our subscribers. And the more folks that we have, the higher our take rate, the, the, the better opportunity to lower our fees or to have funds that we can use in other ways for the benefit of our subscribers. So those are the those are the the, the two things that we're we're working on, and you know now that we have Maggie on board, it's it's uh, it's something that doesn't all you know we're 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 spreading the load with folks with expertise in these in these areas. So um, my I I I really would like to see our fees lowered in the in the long term, but that's 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 just so you know where I am. If there's any any question about that, there shouldn't be. Uh, any additional discussion on on this in general? Happy five years. <laughs> well, hearing none, I recommend that we adjourn at 7.15. Siobhan, you're in control of the uh, recording. Could you could you please email the recording to um, Sybil in the morning and Jeremy Matt, please? All right. The, the meeting is adjourned at seven fifteen. Thank you, everybody. And I'm I'm going to add the uh, the change in the chat right now. <laughs>